Um, the thing that strikes us is the level of respondents on employer branding, obviously. Um, so we would have about sort of 400,000 people visit the career section of Silicon Republic, and it's primarily driven out of interest on career news. What we tend to see is the kind of uh, companies that have invested in employer branding. We'll see their CEOs being interviewed, and uh, you know, most CEOs, if you ask them, you know, what is the actual key concern that they have, they're automatically actually going to say, well, look, it's about sort of, you know, talent acquisition and retention. Um, what we find really interesting is if you then ask the same CEOs, okay, so what's your brand strategy? It's kind of a gap. So I think the very clever companies that we're seeing, and we're seeing this increasingly, is we'll interview CEOs um, and they will talk about the team, the technologies they get to work on, the really cool stuff they're doing, their diversity policy, as much as they'll actually talk about their customer value proposition. Now, they're few, but increasing. And they're the really clever companies that are actually going to win when the candidates have so much choice. James, you're, you're out there with companies day by day, week by week. Uh, what's it like right now? So, um, ironically enough, when you look at, say, something like market reputation, which we, we're all focusing on at the moment, it's, um, it's the organizations that had a rough ride during the last number of years are the ones that are actually more mindful of it. So, companies like financial services, investment and retail banks are aware that there's a perception of working for that organization out in the market that's not necessarily positive. How could that possibly be so? Yes. I, I can possibly <laughs> comment on that. Um, so they've done a lot of work in this space already. So they're actually ahead of the curve when it comes to market reputation because that they're, they're aware of the issues that exist within that area. I think there's exemplar companies who are doing this absolutely brilliantly and it's quite clear. But I think that uh, the, the other companies who are competing with them need to realize that actually the candidate and being in a, um, a candidate-led market, that actually the candidates are very put off by certain things and very turned on by certain things. Actually, as Darren said, actually, but just in relation to as well, how your website looks, if you're looking for a technologist, how your website looks is going to be reputation because when they engage with, they're going to say, okay, this feels really cool. And even if you're not looking for a technologist, cool is good. So how does your website look? How does it read? What does it look like? It, it's amazing how even very small things, the same would apply to what do your um, profiles for your, uh, on LinkedIn look like for your um, existing staff? What are they doing within LinkedIn or other social media? All of those things have really big reputation impact. I would think the companies that actually understand it very well, um, you can almost guarantee they have somebody in charge of not just candidate reputation, but it, they have somebody in charge of employer branding. Um, and employer branding is resourced, and it has a budget, and it's something that goes from the leadership team right through the entire organization. It's not something that's seen as a HR issue. It's seen as a company culture issue. And I think that plays into the candidate's experience. So if the candidate's experience is, okay, here's the actual culture and values, and that communication comes from the top, um, and this is what you would expect, uh, if, they, if they receive what they expect, then they're going to give good reviews in Glassdoor. If it's a sort of HR scene thing that they have to actually just say, okay, well, look, this is the kind of experience you're going to get, and then the rest of the organization isn't aligned to that and therefore doesn't deliver, then inevitably you're going to get bad reviews on things like Glassdoor, etc. And I would expect that companies, particularly when it comes to top talent, I was interested in, in the finding regarding difficult to find top talent. These are very clever people, so what they will not tend to do is spend a lot of time looking at job ads. They want to more or less see themselves or envisage themselves working in that organization. And they'll use tools like video. So they'll actually go and look at an organization and go, OK, well, can I picture myself working there? What is the kind of roles that they do? And they'll more or less project themselves onto that company. And if the company has the tools and the communications and employer brand as, as a core part of that, they'll be able to tell the story of what it's like for the equivalent of individual in that organization. And not only will they not see social media as being fragile for, for, for brand, employer branding, they'll actually embrace it and they'll want to share that kind of experience. So the really clever companies have employer brand at a leadership um, 
level and it goes through the entire organization.